Sometimes, the best finds are the unexpected ones. I stumbled across this abandoned industrial yard while I was trying to find somewhere completely different. Fair warning, there is a bit of rude graffiti in this video, but stick around to the end because I did manage to track down a bit of history about the place. Now the first two buildings I came across were completely sealed up, and as I've said before, I never break in. Unless there's an easy way in, and back out again, I don't bother. The next two buildings, however, were a different story. The first was a garage for larger vehicles with an attached workshop. Plenty of rust and decay in here. From the artwork, it's pretty clear that a group of kids have found their way in here at some point and discovered a can of road marking spray paint. That probably came from the road workers who stored some kit here back in the mid noughties Some other stuff in here though has clearly been untouched for much longer. The nails have clearly been there a very long time. A bit of trigger's broom. Now, that is easily the, the largest <laughs> site I've ever seen spray painted somewhere. And they've gone full bore, it's got the, the hairs and the squirts, that's, that's top marks for that. Nice, uh, smashed up windows. And uh, Andrew is uh, for nil by bum apparently. It's, uh, it's good that his medical notes are here for us just in case. Uh, some old road signs. Uh, the, uh, the language may give you a clue which part of the world I'm in right now. Um, but from the looks of it, they're here from 18 years ago. The second building was smaller, but visually much more impressive. Again, it was another garage workshop. I probably spent most of my time in here, but it gave me more clues about when this site was in operation. I love all the colors in this room. So you've got the greens, you've got the light coming through the window, you've got the browns and the patina of the rust on everything. And you've still got the inspection pits in here that are well and truly full of water. You can tell that one, very few people have been frequenting this site. That there isn't lots of damage, there's lots of graffiti, it hasn't been staged and set up to make fancy photographs. And you can see where nature is starting to pour its way back and the wind and the rain and the plants are taking their tolls on the building but people existed here once and I like to document these places while they still exist because one day they will crumble and rot and totally disappear and be nothing but scars on the landscape or it'll all get knocked down and turn into cookie cutter houses and the only things left of here will be people's memories and eventually just photographs and images. Just a, a butterfly wing of all things to find in a room like this. So I don't know if this is meant to look like this or if this is some sort of a bizarre offering to the engineering gods, but it looks like uh, they left a tribute of corn. Outside was the remains of a storage yard next to the old rail line that serviced the site. There was a collection of seriously vintage railway carriages that had been used as storage rooms or site offices, all in various states of decay. Check out these old train carts, because these are beauts. Clearly this one's suffered some fire damage at some point. Another part of Trigger's broom. Hello mosquito, don't attack me please. Oh, that's awesome. I have to get a shot in here. It's dark so I probably have to get a nice long exposure in here but that looks pretty awesome. <laughs> if, if this isn't something straight out of Fallout 4 I don't know what is. Utterly decayed structures. That might be strange, but I, I find this stunning. This is just beautiful, just seeing the irregular patterns of nature clawing it back. I know I've said it a thousand times already, but... And yeah, God, there haven't been train cars like this for a long time, I don't think. So we did some research and this was the service yard for the adjacent disused quarry. There's been quarrying on site here since about the 1800s, however that finally ceased back in the 1980s when the rail line that serviced it was also shut down. This fits with the phone numbers that I found that were all missing the ones in the area code which would place it as somewhere before 1995. And the safe working regulation posters that were on the wall that were also superseded in the 90s. We know from the forgotten signage that this was used by road workers briefly back in the mid 90s for some nearby road works. 
I did find a porter cabin that was owned by an engineering company that had a more modern phone number, although that phone number now belongs to an estate agent, and from the cigarette packets I found that would date the usage back to the late noughties, early tens, which would fit with an online account that I found of the site being briefly occupied back in 2012. There were some fresh tyre tracks, but this site does also still form the access track to part of a still active substation on the far side of the quarry. If you like that video, you should probably watch this one up here next, but for now, thanks for watching, goodbye.